In 2021, we're bombarded daily with so much information that it seems as if we've seen literally everything. But if you really think you've seen everything, you're wrong. I'm sure you didn't know that a person can have several hundred teeth in their mouth or that thousands of Chinese students play the famous mobile game at the same time in real life. This is the infinity. And this is an interesting video for those who think they've already seen everything in the world. Let's go. How many teeth are in a person's mouth? I'm sure most of you have just said the exact number, 32. Yeah, that's right. An adult has 32 permanent teeth. However, there are some people on the planet who have many more teeth. There can be 33, 34, 36, or even 200 teeth in a person's mouth. It's hard to believe, but this is true. And the reason for this is hyperdontia. In short, it's an abnormality that appears in addition to the regular number of teeth. This anomaly manifests itself differently in everyone. Some people just get a couple of extra teeth. This occurs in a quarter of cases. For other people, hyperdontia gives only one tooth. This occurs in two-thirds of cases. And about 5% of patients with this condition have three or more extra teeth. In super rare cases, there are so many teeth that they cover almost the entire oral cavity. For example, an Indian guy named Ashik Kawai had 232 extra teeth. Just imagine how many it is. Luckily, he had surgery to remove all of his extra teeth. Raynaud's syndrome. I'm sure it's happened to all of you. You carry heavy bags from the grocery store, put them on the floor when you get home, and you're horrified to see the bag squeeze your blood vessels so tightly that your fingers turn pale. Not a pretty sight, huh? But people with Raynaud's syndrome don't even have to carry anything heavy. People with this syndrome suffer from an intermittent disturbance of the arterial blood supply to the hands or feet, which causes their fingers or toes to become pale, cold, and numb. After the attack, blood rushes to the affected blood vessels, causing pain and redness in the hands and feet. The true causes of Raynaud's syndrome are not yet known, but it's thought that the blood vessels of patients suffering from the disease are much more sensitive to the hormone noradrenaline than those of healthy people. Regeneration People take their body's capabilities for granted. For example, we hardly think about how exactly the body heals scratches and bruises. And we certainly don't think about the resources that are involved in the process of regeneration. Cuts and abrasions may seem to heal rather quickly, but in fact it takes the body about a month to heal the wound completely. This is time-lapse that shows the body's ability to regenerate. The author of this time-lapse took photos of a finger abrasion every four hours, six times a day, for 33 days. You can see from the footage that the injury is not serious. This is just the most common abrasion that any of us have had. Only after watching the entire video does it become clear that even such an injury takes a long time for the body to heal. Do you remember such a video game on cell phones as Snake? I'm sure that most of you remember it very well and now have a feeling of nostalgia. In China, this game seems to be very popular. So popular that there, Snake is played by real people in real life. High school students in Jinzhou, which is in Shangxi province, are the most devoted fans of this game. This footage shows them playing it in real life. The site's very interesting, unusual, and rare. I'm sure you've never seen anything like this before. The rows of students running around the stadium and building up the length of the snake, just like in the real video game. If you're wondering how many students are involved in the game in this video, I'll tell you. There are 3,000 of them. What's more interesting, this live game is not a one-time performance or a flash mob. Such an event is held at the school every week. According to local teachers, it cheers the students up. What other mobile or computer games do you think can be played in reality in a similar way? Share your thoughts in the comments. I'll be interested to read. Also, stay tuned because further in the episode, there are many more interesting things which you'll see for the first time in your life. Let's move on. There are many unique and interesting places on the planet, but the island of Dals stands out among them. It's located in one of the canals in Xochimilco, an area of Mexico City. The name of the island speaks for itself. It is indeed an island that is literally crawling with dolls. When you arrive on the island, you'll see hundreds of these creepy toys. They hang from trees, lie on the ground, and hang from fences and ropes. The lifeless eyes of the dolls stare at tourists as they look right into their souls. And some dolls have no eyes at all. All they have is just empty holes. It's not surprising that the island of the dolls, though, is a famous tourist attraction, but has a reputation as a scary place. By the way, according to legend, the dolls are supposed to protect the island from the ghost of a girl who passed away here. 
But apparently this doesn't help much because tourists say that the island is haunted by real ghosts, and the dolls themselves are not as simple as they seem. According to the locals, at night the dolls move their arms and legs, and sometimes you can even hear them whispering. What do you think competitions will be like in the future? Some of you would say that there will be athletes demonstrating even more incredible body abilities, and some would say that in the future there will be more and more strange sports. But it seems to me that in the future it won't be humans competing, but robots like this. South Korea already has such competitions. In 2018, the first alpine skiing tournament was held there with robots competing for the grand prize. Eight teams from various research universities, as well as private robotics companies, participated in the tournament. The robots competed at Welly Hilly Ski Resort for a $10,000 prize. It looks unusual to say the least, but it's also somehow creepy. I guess soon we can expect some humans versus robots contests. Irokanji Jellyfish Jellyfish are different. Some are relatively harmless, and their bite is no more dangerous than a sting from a nettle. And some are the Irokanji jellyfish. This is a group of extraordinary venomous Pacific jellyfish, and some of the most venomous Pacific jellyfish. Their main habitat is Australian waters. <laughs> Once again, Australians are unlucky with the fauna. Interestingly, the Irokanji jellyfish is a small jellyfish. The width of its dome varies from 5 millimeters to 2.5 centimeters. At the same time, the tentacles of this jellyfish greatly exceed the size of its dome and can reach one meter in length. But the most important thing is the fact that the bite of this jellyfish is very dangerous for humans. It causes the Irukanji syndrome, which include a variety of unpleasant consequences, from pain throughout the body to nausea and tachycardia and even pulmonary edema. In some cases, death is also possible. The Irukanji jellyfish venom is slow-acting so symptoms may take several days to appear. Here's another reason not to go to Australia. Gimpy Gimpy sounds like the name of a Teletubby. It would seem that whatever this Gimpy Gimpy is, it shouldn't pose a threat. But in fact, Gimpy Gimpy is a very dangerous plant, the stinging tree. It grows in Indonesia and Australia. Yeah, Australians are as unlucky with flora as they are with fauna. It's clear from its name that this tree is capable of stinging. The hairs that cover the tree leaves are crystals of silicon oxide and can easily pierce the skin. They cause painful burns, the pain of which can last for several days and even months. Affected skin becomes covered in small reddish patches that eventually combine to form one large reddish and swollen burn. In rare cases, the gimpy gimpy can even kill a person, but so far it's only happened once. However, dogs and horses become victims of stinging trees quite often. From the first few seconds of this video, it's not clear what exactly is going on here. Some giant thing is inflating in some tunnel. What's the point? But as it turns out, it does make sense. The thing is a special plug that's used in subway tunnels. The way it works is similar to the plug you put in your bathtub drain. This giant plug is designed to hold back the spread of water if flooding occurs in the subway. But that's not all. The huge bloating plug is also capable of protecting against blast waves, the spread of harmful substances, and even chemical weapons. In the event of a potential danger, a special pump, which is built into the tunnel wall, activates. It instantly spreads and inflates the plug, and it blocks the path from danger, whatever it may be. Take a look at these unusual spheres. Have you ever seen anything like this? I don't think many of you have come across these spheres because you can see them mostly in Argentina on the coast of Buenos Aires. They look quite strange. On the one hand, they look like bouncy balls. On the other hand, they look like something completely unknown. In fact, you're now looking at eggs laid by sea snails called Adolomelon brasiliana. Each of these spherical eggs contain a special liquid that's high in protein and sugar. In addition, inside the spheres you can discern tiny embryos. In each sphere, there may be about a dozen of them. By the way, not only the unusual spheres themselves are interesting, but also the fact that they're often found on the coast. They shouldn't be there, because the lack of water has an extremely negative effect on their embryos. The spheres are washed up on the shore due to the surfs. The water carries them to the sand, where the embryos and interesting spheres usually die. So if you find yourself in Argentina and see such spheres on the coast, it's better to carefully return them to the water. That's all guys. What impressed you the most from this episode? Let me know in the comments. Thanks for watching and see you later.